Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well. That you're all having a great day. First off, a very big thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my newest channel. I'm very close to 10,000 subs. I was actually quite shocked when I looked at the numbers. Thank you all very, very much, as always, for your support. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. The Bitcoin price line ascended past 11,450 US dollars yesterday. The cryptocurrency is expected to rise towards the $14,000 mark if it continues to hold the support of 10,500 US dollars. And there's a little pretty chart right there. Where are the words? Where the, there we go. At the start of the day, the cryptocurrency traded above 10,950. For the day's lowest, Bitcoin was observed at 10,969 US dollars, while Bitcoin's price rose to 11,478. At the time of writing, Bitcoin was observed around 11,300 US dollars, give or take. The Trading View analyst, Trading Shot, is of the opinion that the Bitcoin to US dollar pair will see a rise towards 13,900 US dollars. An 11-month resistance lies at 10,500. The resistance is very important for Bitcoin. Bitcoin had finally broken above the resistance that had been testing for 11 months. There is a lot of optimism. Currently in the wings or the air of the cryptocurrency space that Bitcoin is gearing up for a very large movement in price. The number that we keep seeing keep hearing that everyone keeps on saying is that we have to pass by 14,000 US dollars. However, even during the volatility and the drops down air quotes in price that we had, one of them being the, the $1,400 drop, which I thought was also quite interesting because like, it was like 38 minutes later, we had already recovered. A, a, a lot of these huge dramatic drops, I always feel like are premeditated planned people trying to push the price down so that they can accumulate more because then because you know if, if if we dropped down and like something had fundamentally gone wrong we would have stayed down but the price always kind of works its way back up anyway so fourteen thousand dollars is the number that we are currently looking for there were a plethora of articles floating around out there talking about that apparently many analysts believe believe that uh bitcoin is on its way there no actual time frame i saw some people talking about that this week we could try to go above 12 and 13,000 and therefore but they all had a, a similar augusty kind of uh time frame tying directly into this as well ethereum xrp and tezos continued charting increases chain link to mark yet another all-time high Bitcoin remained relatively stable and has its dominance reduced. Green dominates most of the cryptocurrency market with some impressive gains for XRP, Tezos, and Chainlink, as Link even marked a fresh new all-time high. Bitcoin's unsuccessful attempt to conquer 11,500 has pushed the asset down to 11,300. This, this sounds like this was written by somebody who really likes altcoins. It's like the 18th time that they've knocked down uh, Bitcoin. Speculations for a revived altcoin season emerged as the majority of alts have increased their value in the past 24 hours. The second largest cryptocurrency market continued its impressive 2020 summer with another 2% increase. And Ether now trades at around $392. A lot of people, I think the number for that we keep getting for Ether is $400 and $500. If we manage to pass these numbers, then apparently, apparently, allegedly, Ethereum is going to start skyrocketing and lose its mind price wise it's worth noting <clears throat> that the ethereum 2.0 madala testnet should arrive today which would prompt further price actions for the native cryptocurrency yeah, i assume if it launches and it works we're probably going to see some um optimism for ethereum 2.0 ripple's performance lately has been quite positive apart from overtaking tether as the third largest digital asset by market cap xrp has surged by over oh my gosh XRP has surged by over 80% in less than a month. In the past 24 hours alone, XRP pumped by 5% to above 31 cent. SV, Cardano, Binance Coin also marked substantial gains from the top 10 coins. ADA went up by 2.5, while BSV and BNB jumped by 4.2%. 
The 6% increase registered by Tezos has pushed Tezos above $3, currently sitting at $3.15. The market is doing very well. <clears throat> I don't know for how much longer we're going to see these great numbers. I do hope that it continues. I will say, in all honesty, I am very happy that we are registering 2, 3, 4% daily gains as opposed to a 15, 25 18% daily gains because that would mean that we are pumping way too hard and the market is going to completely collapse. But over the course, the, 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 for those of you who are relatively new here, welcome. And the cryptocurrency market, for those of you who don't know, moves at a, a much rapid dir, much more rapid. It moves a lot quicker than traditional markets. So while traditional markets may see 8% gains over the course of a year in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, what have you, Cryptocurrencies tend historically to see around anywhere from 5 to 10 to 30% increases per month. Of course, this does not go on forever. You, we usually have um, one year cycles, whereas traditional markets tend to have eight to 10 year cycles. So every eight to 10 years, there is normally a stock market crash. In the cryptocurrency world, we tend to have a one year period where prices go up. And then eventually around the last month, they go completely insane. This is normally when you can tell that the bubble is about that. And then we get that two to three year period where prices are kind of trending down and or sideways. So the fact that we are going up and we have relative increases every single day is very good because if you keep increasing by three to 3% 3 per day, eventually it adds up to very big numbers. Bitcoin's dominance hasn't really dropped that far, but I mean, of course... <clears throat> I've mentioned this before many other times before in the past. Don't believe the, the, not that this is a negative article, but a lot of people paint it as something very negative for Bitcoin in general. Bitcoin will go up by five, six, seven percent. Altcoins will go up by around 12%. Of course, Bitcoin's dominance is going to decrease when you have 9,000 other coins, more realistic, around two, 300 other coins that are uh, boosting up rapidly in price. But it's good for the entire wider cryptocurrency market because normally, We've seen that before, that alt seasons tend to lead the entire cryptocurrency market into this euphoric money-making phase. And as of right now, all the coins are doing well. And I think everyone is, I think at this point, we can all be honest, everyone's holding their breath to see if Bitcoin is going to try to hit 14,000. And I think even as it gets closer, the other altcoins would also start to completely lose their minds. That's all the price news thus far for today and without further ado uh let's move on mm, next up following the successful launch of shelly cardano is on track to launch smart contracts and native assets in 2020 according to a statement by its founder charles huskinson huskinson made the remarks in response to criticism here we go by eos cto dan larimer who said that the Cardano blockchain ecosystem is not powerful enough to run DeFi or any decentralized applications. He said smart contracts and native assets are coming this year. Our latency is lower than Ethereum's. The dominant DeFi platform Hydra brings it to sub second. With the recent launch of Shelly, Cardano achieved a recent milestone and said that things should be easier going forward. But for some reason, Larimer thinks Cardano is still inadequate. He said... Your protocol doesn't work for applications other than currency. The confirmation latency is too long for most DeFi and completely unsuitable for most use cases. What are the material facts I'm wrong about? <sighs> Here's the actual tweet between these two kids uh, who just need to go fight in the street or something like that. It's, it's just, I, 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 I don't understand. Um, the, the problem is, or rather one of the main issues that I had f had in a, for a while in the cryptocurrency community have you ever heard the phrase, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all? It's kind of just like, first of all, both of these protocols have had people stepping on their, their, their feet, their toes, and their faces uh, for many years. EOS is also not without faults, uh, especially when it comes to the creation of new coins, who gets those new coins, and the people who are actually able to vote on the protocol's changes. Uh, so I, it seems a bit weird. Yes, for clarity, I do own... Ada and I do own EOS. There's no real difference there. It's just more of a, 
why the need for this pettiness? Like if you if you firmly believe that someone else's blockchain doesn't work, just continue working on yours because two to five years from now, we'll be able to go, oh, wow, that one doesn't work. I'm glad I stuck with this one as opposed to saying ridiculous things online. I guess the, the main news is or should be that apparently smart contracts and native assets are going to be built on top of Cardano this year. I assume that that is going to be the big runner up for Cardano's uh, price. When we smart getting... <laughs> When we smart getting, when we start getting smart contracts on their platform and people start building other DeFi coins and other platforms and especially other coins in general on top of them, that is going to be a major boost for their price. Is it that Dan Larimer is afraid of Cardano? For, for, for those of you who don't know, <clears throat> Cardano, I mean, EOS was actually run through an ICO. And they made $4 billion through their ICO. I feel like with $4 billion, you can kind of do a lot and you don't have to smear campaign someone else's coin. Anyway, apparently a whole bunch of stuff is going to be built on Cardano this year. Um, what's the other coin that's supposed to be upgrading soon? It's not EOS. Litecoin's supposed to be getting Mimble Wimble. There was something else also happening. I don't remember exactly what it is. At this point, oh, but I mean, besides Ethereum. Now, of course, that's the major one. Um, once all the upgrades are there, they these people really can't say much more than uh, it works because they've all been fighting for a very long time that they would have these upgrades. And when they all have the upgrades, we'll finally be able to see who actually is going to win the race. Anyway, let's move on. Next up, in quite popular news... Basla Cantonal Bank, or BKB, a government-owned commercial bank in Switzerland, is planning to launch cryptocurrency services through its banking subsidiary. According to an August 3rd report by local news agency Finews, that is F-I-N-E-W-S, BKB subsidiary and a national banking group, Bank Claire, are working on services that will allow customers to trade and store cryptocurrencies. BKB holds a majority stake in Claire, Though the subsidiary possesses its own banking license apart from the BKB, a spokesperson from BKB confirmed the news to Cointelegraph. They also noted that the bank plans to launch these products in response to an increased demand for crypto services in the country. They said, In the BKB group, we are working to offer our clients a solution for trading and deposit of selected cryptocurrencies as an established regional bank. And indeed, national banking group, we wish to give our clients secure access to these new financial products. Here's the actual news story article from Finews right here. It says, Swiss bank wades into crypto. They are apparently the first state-backed lender to tiptoe into cryptocurrencies. For those of you who have not here, been here before, just need a little reminder, there are at least 15 Swiss banks in Switzerland who are into cryptocurrencies. They are custodying cryptocurrency and are offering the buying, selling, holding, trading of cryptocurrency within Swiss. I'm not sure about the trading part, but they definitely have cryptocurrency uh, services. So this is the first uh, state-backed bank that is uh, entering the cryptocurrency space. No one should really be surprised. I assume the other ones have had relative success with their foray into the cryptocurrency space. And now other ones that are backed by the government are like, hey, we also, we also want to start making some money as well. Um, no news as to which cryptocurrencies they are going to be offering i assume it is safe to say that they are going to be offering bitcoin <laughs> surprise right um probably ether and after that it becomes a bit shaky because it depends on the government the region and the sec and all the other security laws that they have if they declare anything as a security or they simply maybe just want to focus on the top two cryptocurrencies before they start seeing interest from other people as to like hey you should add that coin but um yeah all around the world, we officially have banks who are into cryptocurrencies. It is no longer a question of if, because last year people kept on questioning every single time. I said that there were definitely banks behind the scenes who were into cryptocurrencies. They kept on saying, man, you have no idea what you're talking about. Banks are so anti-crypt, they didn't even want to touch Bitcoin. Nope, that's not how the world works. They see money and they want to make more money. And this is why every single bank within the U.S. can also now hold crypto, just as a reminder. Anyway, that's the Swiss bank cryptocurrency news because Switzerland's rich and they want to get richer. 
And without further ado, now let's move on. Mm, next up, the Ethereum Foundation will be building a dedicated security team for Ethereum 2.0 to study any potential cybersecurity and crypto economic issues in the next upgrade. Justin Drake, an Ethereum researcher at the foundation, announced the start of the recruitment process on Twitter. The foundation is looking to hire a variety of security and auditing professionals, both for the software and general model of the upcoming upgrade. Among the potential team's tasks will be fuzzing, bounty hunting, and pager duty, which directly relates to security, security, <laughs> security, security management, software security management. I think that was the only major thing. Uh, with the final stages of preparation for Ethereum 2.0 phase zero underway, heavy emphasis is now being placed on the network security. Yep, because Ethereum cannot mess this up. That would be catastrophic. So as the history goes, Bitcoin's core is probably never for a long time going to be upgraded, maybe with some soft forks. It is to preserve the security of the main chain. Bitcoin last year transacted over one trillion US dollars worth of value. And if you mess that up and if you upgrade it and there's a security flaw or bug and everything goes awry, well, Bitcoin itself goes awry and its price begins to tumble. With Ethereum 2.0, Ethereum is now being used by banks institutions we haven't heard a lot from them in a while but if you do not know them look up the enterprise ethereum alliance they are a consortium of around 400 companies microsoft jp morgan chase etc etc who have all come forward and saying that they are planning on using ethereum or already are using ethereum or are testing ethereum they cannot get this wrong this may be part of the reason why they also are taking a while when it comes to uh launching this ow my leg when it comes to launching all of this uh because there's a lot of money riding behind this if we are talking about the proper potential of ethereum one day being ranging anywhere from two to eight thousand dollars per coin potentially no one knows you cannot have any bugs. You cannot have any software issues, especially after you've been talking about doing this upgrade for five years. So uh, I guess the, according to the other news, the, uh, the Ethereum 2.0 testnet comes out today. They're trying to build extra security around the Ethereum 2.0, which I, of course, would see as just completely logical. Um, and yeah, the network security has to literally be on point because anything lower than that and they will just not. Uh, many other coins would try their darndest to simply just take their spot in the cryptocurrency rankings. Um, anyway, yeah, Ethereum's making a security team, which I feel like they should have done before, but better late than never. That was an actual question. Like I was actually questioning the entire thing. The Russian Federation has banned anonymous deposits to online wallets in a move that will affect 10 million users across the country. According to lawmakers, this initiative is supposed to curb illegal activity such as the financing of, <laughs> good job, financing of terrorism and illegal trade. Online wallet services such as Yandex Web, web Money. PayPal and Kiwi are very popular in Russia. The services maintain approximately 10 million users who use the accounts anonymously by topping them up with cash. Who, who uses PayPal anonymously? Is PayPal even anonymous? PayPal is like one of the most government-centric things. That, what? Some people use these anonymous wallets. Anon PayPal is not anonymous. Some people use these anonymous wallets to purchase cryptocurrency, although the exact numbers are unknown. Antonia Levashenko an economist quoted by RBK believes that these measures will initially have no effect on the blockchain space as Russia tightens its anti-money laundering procedures. However, the existing ban may eventually be applied to virtual currencies as, oh, please. Have you not seen what's been going on in Russia and many other countries? They're, they're, I'm, I'm pretty sure someone is taking a pen and just writing cryptocurrency like in between the actual official document. Um, little weird. Not really, no. Stuff like this happens there quite frequently if you've been paying attention to the last, like, 
three years of me going through the news. Um, a lot of countries are doing things like this because they say that it's for KYC, AML, financing, illegal trade. Studies have been done many times before. I'm not in Russia. I don't know their exact numbers for their studies or if they've even done these studies. Uh, people have found that it's usually less than like a tenth of 1% of online activity is actually illegal in some sort of form or is financing something. Uh, these are blankets that they kind of put over everything to be able to simply get control over everyone to say, look at the scary people across the street. Do you want them to do scary things to you? Well, then let us have control over your money. Um, I assume these things will definitely be happening uh, to the cryptocurrency space within that country as we also just got crypto laws yesterday. There, I think you, I forgot what it is, and I honestly don't even, it's not that I don't care, but it's like you can't really expect that much from a place that is trying to control everything. Um, anyway, yeah, it's definitely going to, I assume, eventually go into the cryptocurrency uh, space within that country, but it really... If you pay attention to the things that have been happening before within the cryptocurrency space, especially when it comes to private transactions and even just normal blockchains and other things that are at the cryptocurrency market's disposal. The news is, yeah, Russia is banning um, anonymous wallet deposits. And I feel like no one here should be surprised. And to finish things off, sorry if I was screaming, I feel like I screamed right there. In the midst of what became described as a Bitcoin bull market, the number of active addresses on the Bitcoin network has been hitting highs of over 1 million this week. This is the highest number of active addresses recorded since January 2018. Data from analytics firm Glassnode has shown. The data is based on the seven-day moving average, which is the sum of the number of active addresses over a seven-day period, <laughs> which kind of makes sense. The seven-day moving average follows seven-day period. Divided by the number of days, logic. There's the little chart right there. Bitcoin recently crossed 10,000, managed to stay above the range, arose to 12,000, 11,000. In fact, the Bitcoin stayed above. There are even high hopes of Bitcoin reaching a new all-time high in 2020. And they are not alone. Yeah, everyone is kind of of the mindset that Bitcoin's probably going to continue to do well as the world's economy just keeps looking like doo-doo. Um, I guess the news here is, is the number of active addresses has risen. I feel like this probably could be a lot higher. But the news that we've been getting is that people actually aren't touching their Bitcoin. Uh, people are buying Bitcoin and then taking it off of exchanges and putting it onto ledgers and other safekeeping spots, wherever that actually might be. Uh, but I guess the number of active addresses are maybe potentially new addresses that are coming online, buying up cryptocurrency as the prices are moving higher. And who knows what they're doing afterwards. But uh, yeah, uh, amazing that we have higher address levels. I mean, network effect, so it's it's going to continue happening, but I guess the news is that prices have moved up, and so have the active addresses. Oh, I get it now. That was a joke. Um, anyway, that's the news for today. It's relatively bullishly good. I don't know how to end that. It's very awkward. I'm just going to click away. As always... A very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, Bolero, Bastos, Crayola, Michelle, URL, On Crypto with Lionel, Tigger, Amach, Anissa, Bake Me a Cake, Arf, Medic, 17, Anytime Fitness, Monks Corner Staff, Body McBoat, <laughs> Body McBoat Face. Yes, to, <laughs> why does that always get me? Yes to Crypto, Miller, Hitch Test, Everyday, and Kyle Skips, Leg Day, Minting Coins, Jeremy Fox, Jim Gardner, Anthony Charles, Nick Mangiela, Body, Paxis, Vlad the Impaler, Richie Witch 3, Nick Kanaya, Setsuna, Damien, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D, Bankroll Network, Crypto Joe, 242 to the World, Wise Night Owl, Jared Schneider, Master Ventures in Thailand. Moher Maroney, man. Nope, nope, nope. Almost said it twice. Adam Grasick, Todd Mullis, a bibliophobia, the animal reader. John Sarson, Nostromo, Martin Steuer. Joshua Vineyard, Moonman High, XRP, Utopia 569, Oscar Maldonado, Yasha Harari, Attila the Han, David James, Navarro Williams, Auspicious, Agile, and Blockchain, and Professor Wally from Gun Bot University. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. Thank you to everyone who is a subscriber to my new channel. And thank you to everyone 
who has remained here this long as I've been doing this. At the moment, Bitcoin is currently up by 0.34%. Ethereum is up by 1.92%. XRP is up by 2.53%. It looks like a little dip right here. The news was in many other places that XRP had gone over 31 cents. It appears that XRP is making the moves right now in the cryptocurrency market. A lot of speculation as to why this is potentially happening. However, a lot of people, I think, are not um, upset with this news. Chainlink is up by 13%. Question mark, question mark. Tezos is up by 10%. EOS is up by 1%. Lumens is up by 2 Tron is up... You know what's really weird? And I'm, and I'm going to be completely honest. It's probably had to do with an SEC letter or something like that. When was the last time we got Tron hype news? Remember, we used to... For those of you who are new to the space, Tron is a cryptocurrency. Don't... You don't have to look much further than that. Like, that's as far as I'll go. Uh, but we used to get Tron hype news, like, every day. The creator of Tron used to post on, on, on Twitter and that are all the time talking about how amazing Tron was. Um, and I was like... Tron is probably going to be called a security because, you know, what's his face keeps talking about it. But it's it's been about a good six, seven months that we've had any Tron news. Fascinating indeed. That's why I said speculation. You know, the whole, the SEC was probably like, hey, how are you? Um, Huobi's up. VeChain is up. Any other crazy, crazy ones? Ampleforth is still down for like the third day in a row. Uh, Theta's up. Quantum is up. Yeah, um, we'll see where the rest of the day goes. Obviously, we have no choice. It's more of a, um, I guess we're all going to be holding our breath until like next Sunday to see where Bitcoin is going to go. It's nice to have a uh, renewed interest back in the market. And also, I mean, another silver lining is that all this volatility is actually quite great for people who trade these coins. Uh, because, you know, the more volatility, the more trades you can make and the higher return you can get. So... Silver lining, silver lining, silver linings everywhere. I do hope that you all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might click. There we go. Might be. I hope it's absolutely... My, my mouse wasn't clicking. I hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.